Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video I'm going to show you three awesome sub D techniques for hard surface modeling in Blender. Let's go! The first one is going to be really cool. It will enable you to run loops um, over edges to sharpen corners without destroying the curvature of your mesh. So let me show you. E, Y and extruded G. Move it in here and use mesh machine all text to copy to the other side and create something like this control 3 right click shade smooth we done now if the uh, control 3 doesn't work for you and what you need to do is go here to preferences enable bull tools okay and you'll be able to add uh, subdivision by simply pressing control 1 2 or 3 okay if you're a beginner i would highly recommend you grab one of our starter courses links in the video description one of them is jump starting to hard surface which will teach you everything you need to know about basics of blender teach you basic modeling skills rendering skills etc and the other one is for add-on users for paid add-on users which is called sci-fi terminal design in blender and it will kind of introduce you to a hard surface add-on workflow like hard ops and box cutter like I said, both courses are free and the links are in the video description. So now with this shape, what I want to do is I want to sharpen the corners, you know, these round corners. But when I do that with edge loops, uh, I'm going to be destroying the curvature. So let me show you. But before I do that, shift D that and we're going to rename this to B as backup and turn it off and we're good to go. So now watch. If I'm going to run loops in here, everything is fine. But the moment I'm going to start running loops here in the middle, I will be destroying this, um, you know, this flow of this mesh here, right? You seeing that? So I'm losing this uh, original smooth curvature here of this shape. So the way to recover that um, is basically by using shrink wrap modifier in a very specific way. So let me show you. So you see, we got this problem, right? So sharp corners, but you know, there is an issue um, in here with this faceting. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier. So add a shrink wrap modifier. And uh, where is it? Shrink wrap here. And we're going to choose the target as the base mesh. And this will basically uh, fix the curvature, but it will damage our corners. And also it's going to create a bit of a mess here. And um, in addition to that, you see there's a bit of a faceting going on. Now, this one can be easily fixed by simply changing the resolution of the base mesh because the base mesh resolution is equal to the one that we actually shrink wrapping. So uh, what you want to do here is increase it by one and this will fix the shading here, right? Now, that is caused by all these loops here converging. If I'm going to add one more loop, it's going to be even worse. Uh, all these uh, uh, points here converging on this corner and being subdivided. So there's a lot of geometry being clashed into one another and sort of overlapping. So in order to fix that and fix the corners, what we want to do, we want to copy that. Okay, we want to copy, duplicate this modifier, right? Select that one and apply it. And this will fix everything. You're going to have sharp corners and the flowy mesh and everything looks beautiful. So this is how you can work with your... Um, you know, with your loops and your subdivided mesh. Okay, so that's tip number one. Now let me duplicate this scene here. I'm gonna create a full copy, and I'm going to uh, change that to uh, another mesh here. So let me just create a new mesh, and I'm gonna show you another really cool technique that I recommend you guys use. So um, let me just scale this on X, G, Z, and copy and Control three. Right click, shade smooth. Okay. So the second technique is actually utilizing uh, the settings here on uh, in the subdivision modifier. So we are uh, by default using the cut mode Clark, but we can switch it to simple. Now, if you switch it to simple, you'll see that all these kind of bend edges, right? So whenever there's a curvature and bending, they're going to become a bit more crisp. And the more subdivision you're going to add, the more crisp they're going to become. But you can actually fix that and make it a bit more smooth by adding secondary subdivision modifiers. So if you go here and add subdivision surface to that, okay, it's going to take a bit of time because Blender likes to slow down. And maybe let's reduce this to five and increase this one to three. Now you can actually adjust the curvature of this edge here by changing the level of subdivision uh, of the first subdivision modifier. So watch, if I'm going to start changing that to lower, 
levels, I'm going to be getting a bit more smoother transitions. And you can, you know, you can use that uh, to um, keep adding shapes here and creating some really interesting, you know, interesting um, sort of paneling effect uh, with your mesh. Let me just remove both of them. And the last example, uh, let's just apply one modifier here. So control three. And I want to show you how to run booleans through your mesh. Okay. So we got this subdivided mesh. And then what I do is we want to cut it with a boolean. All right. So we're going to go to our W with box cutter D, grab this um, square cut here, run it in here, press B for bevel, and we're going to slice it. Now, the reason why this works and it doesn't, you know, collapse our shading is because we are running a boolean modifier after the subdivision. You know, this is basically um, automatic sorting of modifiers by hard ups. But if you reverse the order, it will not work. So if I'm going to move this one above, it's going to be a mess because first I'm booleaning this mesh and I'm cutting it into endgon based mesh and then I'm subdividing endgons, which is why it doesn't work. So now on top of that, we're going to add another modifier, we're going to add a solidification. And again, it works because uh, hard ups is sorting modifier automatically for us which is great. Now we're going to apply that. Okay. So let's apply that and we're going to get this kind of a mesh. Now, if I wanted to run sub D on top of this one, I'm going to have a problem because, you know, I have angons all over the place, even if I'm going to clean this a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to clean that a little bit here. Let's say I'm going to collapse these here and GG and move it somewhere here and collapse this one here and collapse this one to this one. Okay. And uh, let's just do a bit of a cleaning, not much, but a bit of a cleaning. So the shading is going to be a little bit better okay, here and uh, we can clean this one in here and then we're probably going to have another one here on the other side. The same problem. So click that period numpad and zoom in. We're going to collapse these here and collapse these and move this one a little bit away from this um, shape and collapse these two and we're going to collapse these two okay so there you go right perfect so now if i wanted to run sub d on top of that okay you'll see that i'm gonna get a mess so the way to fix that would be um you know you can do it either with add-ons so with mesh machine so you could go uh, click alt click and then go to y and use offset cut and then you could reduce this um parameter here by holding shift and scrolling in something like that right and you're good to go and you're gonna do the same thing on the bottom and you'll see that you know the shading's gonna get fixed or what you could do is you could actually select one of the faces go here to selection go to linked and linked flat faces and increase the um, angle here till you select um, everything here and you could run um, you know, an inset here. So I for inset, inset it just a little bit, select this one, go to linked faces. Uh, so select, select linked and increase the angle a little bit more to select all of them. I for inset and select all of them. And you can see that the shading is perfect. Okay. So you can run sub D even though we have handguns in here, it doesn't matter because, um, you know, um, basically the, uh, they're quite small and the shading holds so this is a very quick way of working with sub d and, and booleans and you know you don't really need to create a perfectly quad based mesh for this to work uh, unless you really need a quad based mesh but if you don't need the quad based mesh this is an awesome technique to use for uh, you know very quick workflows anyway that's it for this one guys thanks for watching see you in the next one